Hi to all, how's it going? So last December, late 2020, Yorick has presented us with the opportunity of participating at FOSDEM, where every year thousands of developers of free and open source software from all over the world gather at the event in Bruxelles. In 2021, they gathered online. And by the way, FreeCAD had two talks, uh, the other one being presented by Jean-Marie Verdun with uh, its CAD Cloud online version control for FreeCAD. So if you have the opportunity, go see that video too. Anyway, as an avid user, the, uh, the idea was to present some of the awesome features of LinkStage 3 while reinforcing that everybody at FreeCAD wants these features uh, merged. But because of the very complex changes, everything needs to be carefully reviewed, long tested and bug fixed. Not only in the changes itself, but in other areas of FreeCAD affected by it. So it's normal that it is a slow process. But uh, it does happen and will continue to happen. Everybody involved uh, is working towards it. I said to myself, what could uh, go wrong? Okay. Lost you for a second. But we have the recording. Oh, thank God. Look <laughs> view and still see the outline. Another okay. example. Uh, I can hear you, but your uh, but your camera is stuck. And why not make it uh, even more interesting? Let's go directly to the source creator. So this is the outcome uh, of the talk. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Curellario Florin, uh, aka Officina Rom uh, Robotica in the forum and I run a small YouTube channel where I uh, try to promote and showcase FreeCAD as a um, software and also bring news about the ever-increasing uh, number of new features that its uh, developers bring on an ever-increasing pace. Together with me is uh, Zeng Lei, aka Real Thunder in the forum, one of the um, developers that uh, is pushing FreeCAD to um, new limits and with whom I had the pleasure to interact a lot in a really constructive uh, and uh, positive manner. In fact, the idea for this talk uh, has, uh, has come taking a look back at the awesome uh, outcome that this positive user developer interaction can bring in an open source development uh, environment. Hello, uh, Real Thunder, would you care to present yourself? Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhen Lei. It's uh, difficult to pronounce for the Westerner, so you just call me by my uh, foreign name. Real Thunder will be enough. Today, um, I'll be first to introduce my uh, FreeCAD uh, link branch. Uh, we'll talk about the, the past, the origin of this branch, and then to present you the new features, and we'll talk a little about the future development plans. Yeah, this is my name. Okay, first the past, I first used uh, FreeCAD 0.13 version back in 2014 and uh, I want to build uh, of my own device. Back in the day, the uh, Google Glass is uh, rich, has reached its peak uh, impact, but then it went downhill, so I think maybe I can do a better job. So as you can see that the, my device is uh, at the top. It shapes like a headphone and had the head display. Uh, I used the assembly tool workbench to uh, assemble my device. I find it works well for assembling purpose, but then it has some problem when you try to update your design. Okay, I first uh, made some contribution to FreeCAD about the GUI tree view improvement, then uh, did a little uh, something on the path workbench, mostly because I want to do the PCB milling. Uh, yeah, then came the idea of uh, improving the assembly uh, capability of FreeCAD. So I first made some discussion in the forum about the ideas of a link, which is an easier way to share the, both the geometry and the visual uh, of of the same instant of the same part so i uh went out and implemented the link in the same year uh because uh, link is a complex feature that involves a lot of changes in the core so uh it was pretty difficult to uh get accepted so i created the assembly tree workbench as a demo and also test as a test of my uh link feature 
I attempted two uh, pull requests, uh, both in the two, 2017 and 2018. Uh, but as expected, uh, both PR got pending. But I continue to work on the assemblies. I have my assembly tree allows uh, to use any geometry for constraining from the auxiliary objects like Detrum and uh, uh, Sketch. I, I created the Sketch export functionality to allow the user to export the Sketch edge, including the construction lines. Uh, but the export is not uh, very stable because of the infamous topological naming problem in FreeCAD. And uh, so, uh, like the famous quote, I came, I saw, and I conquered it. I implement the topological naming framework. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a joyful ride. I, yeah, later on, I uh, reflected the step import and export, uh, mostly using my link feature to greatly improve the, its efficiencies. Uh, it has enabled FreeCAD to import uh, some large assembly files are previously it's not possible. Yeah, the next feature to get uh, linkified is the expression uh, together with the, the spreadsheet uh, workbench. I uh, didn't just add the support of a link into the expression. I have expanded into a full-fledged uh, language with a Python-like uh, syntax. Uh, they came uh, came uh, to 2019. Uh, my uh, link features uh, finally got merged into the FreeCAD 019. It's the third attempt. That's why my branch is called Link Stage Three. It's because of the third this attempt. Stage. Yes, <laughs> the, because of this. To, the the to third my, time uh, is the charm. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the yeah. Uh, just like, briefly, uh, why were there um, so many difficulties in linking um, in um, merging the PR uh, request uh, because uh, the changes were really extensive in the core. Yes, because the core has to recognize that the link is a special object. It does not uh, have its own uh, geometry data or visual data. It has to pull the to follow the link. To get the, the actual data, the yeah. actual so data. the yeah yeah so the uh, changes are extensive and the the other developer has to review it and the, the merging it took a lot of effort. But uh, in the end, um, it was uh, really worth it because um, one big lack uh, of a FreeCAD uh, in its uh, default um, configuration was uh, the lack of an assembly workbench. Uh, yes. Now in the latest uh, release uh, and we'll hopefully um, see a uh, stable release really really soon of uh, 0.19 of FreeCAD 0.19 now we have uh, by default uh, assembly free as a workbench okay, we have uh, the assembly uh, we actually have a uh, few variant of the assembly workbench i can't see which one will end up in most likely, none of them will be uh, built into the FreeCAD for the uh, near future. There will most likely a uh, synergy of all those workbenches took various features from them, and then uh, maybe later we can have a better assembly workbench. Right now, the user has a few choice of uh, additional uh, add-ons. Uh, there yes, is uh, uh, another assembly workbench that uh, is heavily relying on your modifications. And that is assembly four. Yeah, assembly four offers a different approach for the assembly. The user has total control of the constraining by writing the uh, expression, but you or by ex explicitly uh, create the the mating of the part. Okay, uh, my work continues. I didn't stop here because, uh, as you know, as a normal user, I struggled a lot with the free cat, just like everyone else. Uh, then I suddenly become a master, sort of. So, uh, you know, the feeling, it's feeling very empowering. So, uh, yeah, I continued. I added the possibility to save the FreeCAD document as an uh, uncompressed directory uh, with the files that are suitable for external version control software like Git. Uh, so maybe the next step will be someone to implement the version control uh, functionality into the FreeCAD. Was this a user request or was this uh, one of your um, one of uh, your needs? Yeah, 
Yes, uh, I think both, because we all know that uh, for CAD projects, especially the assembly, it involves a lot of files. So you have to have some way to manage the different versions. Yeah, I do use uh, Git before even I start to contribute with FreeCAD. But then the FreeCAD file format is binary. It's not really friendly for the version control. So this is a uh, direction for future development. Yes. So this could be also really useful for people that work in teams. Yes, yes indeed. Okay, I then uh, spend a lot of time to improve the 3D selection and rendering work, which I will be showing you in the later videos. I also started to improve the part design workbench, uh, focusing on a better support of uh, multiple solid. Yeah, uh, now it's the present. It's mostly my uh, 2020 work. I started to put more time to improve the FreeCAD user interface. The first one I tackled is uh, the overlay user interface. I've tried the, the glass add-on that's developed by uh, Triplus, uh, another FreeCAD contributor, and I liked it a lot. So um, I went on to add this uh, this this type of uh, interface into the uh, FreeCAD. I think it was around this time that we started um, talking uh, in the forum, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, one of my first uh, requests uh, as a simple user was um, the outline of the of the text uh, in the tree view. Yes, uh, yes indeed. Uh, actually, I saw the, your video about configuring the Triplus uh, glass workbench, and then I uh, started to implement this. And uh, because it's a user interface, it really requires the interaction with the user to better uh, develop the feature, because it's for the user directly. Uh, what the overlay user interface does is it can display those uh, view panels on top of the 3D view. Uh, you can uh, drag it around, resize it, uh, yeah, and uh, as you can see in the video that uh, the, the overlay is uh, truly transparent close to the visual and the, the mouse clicking. And you also have those uh, auto hiding of uh, the panels. What uh, the overlay interface uh, does for the simple user is really extending uh, the canvas, the 3D view, giving the impression of a really wider um, work uh, area, although the physical space occupied by the, the various uh, interface elements is, uh, is always the same as previous. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but because of the auto hiding and the click through, the workspace is actually uh, enlarged a bit. Yeah. Next, uh, I well, next I worked on the Pi menu, which is another add-on provided by Triplus. And what the Pi menu provided uh, is uh, not only the visual improvement of the menus. It actually the most important part is for the user to create its own customized menus, uh, and they can be. Uh, brought out by keyboard shortcut. Um, one feature that uh, not a lot of users know about is the quick search. Uh, yeah, what the video also shows is uh, that uh, because it's a uh, it's, uh, aid for the user to create its own menu because it has to know uh, what options are, right? what, what commands are. So the, you can simply type in the, the command titles and it will uh, show you the the various comments. Uh, you uh, when we were talking previously about merging the various features that you coded for FreeCAD, uh, you said that uh, essentially the overlay we, uh, user interface and Pi menu are self-contained uh, as a code base. So uh, this should be easier in a way to to do the merge. Yes, yes. Unlike the link feature and uh, also the topological naming, which uh, the code is spread uh, everywhere, the, the GUI feature is mostly concentrated on a few places. Okay. Uh, next is the 3D rendering and selection. Uh, what I implemented is a feature called selection on top. Uh, it means that uh, when you select an object will be displayed on top of the others. It will be shown uh, transparent. You can easily select the hidden edges by just clicking 
and also the hidden faces using the mouse wheel. Yeah, together with the pie menu, you can also select the higher level of geometries like wires. Yeah, uh, you are uh, um, you have introduced the UU um, shortcut menu, uh, if I remember correctly, and the GG for yeah. selecting the hierarchy of the model also. Yes, uh, the you use the hierarchy selection. Yeah, sorry. It means geometry. <laughs> I use them all the time. It's uh, muscle memory. I didn't remember the, the letter. <laughs> yes. yes. Next is the sh shadow features. Uh, I searched around the the shadow. Uh, is the shadow rendering is quite common in those uh, commercial CAD software. I saw that that's pretty cool, and I'd like to have it in FreeCAD. So I searched around the forum. I saw the post made by Yuri, and uh, he has already made a somewhat working solution using the existing functionality provided by the Coin3D, the rendering library of FreeCAD. But it has some problems, so I dig into the source code and saw that the, the shadow function of Coin3D is only half finished. Uh, so again, I, I, I saw it, I came, I made it complete somewhat complete and as you can see in this video it's a simple scene but uh, it shows pretty much all the uh, functionality of the shadow rendering that I uh, brought in to my branch and uh, you can see all those shadows uh, of the transparent object also the opaque one this is the spotlight and previously it's the directional light you can move the lights around uh, this is actually a, a feature I developed early, right at the beginning of uh, 2020. But then I want to show you the feature with those uh, uh, three enhancements. That's why I, I put it here. Uh, what the variant link means is that the user can create a link or a binder as shown in the video, of and then change the configuration of the the, the object and to have a different shape uh, than the original object. And the user can uh, create those configurations using spreadsheet. Yeah, as you can see in the video, you, you uh, create a binder with this hexagon, then you can change it into a pentagon. Yes, it's uh, actually built on top of the expression and spreadsheet. So anything that can be uh, parametrized by the expression or spreadsheet can be used can be to create used. a different different configuration yes now next is the uh, new features new improvements i made for the part design most of those features are built on top of my uh, topological naming framework the first is uh, the suppress you can suppress any individual features inside of a body and thanks to the topological naming the new naming uh, the, the later features uh, won't be affected and you will get the correct result. And next is the preview feature. Uh, up, the upstream FreeCAD already have uh, some preview mode for the primitive shapes like cube or cylinder. I extended to uh, include more features like you see in the videos, the fillet. You can uh, easily select the, the fillet and the, the preview will show you the uh, result. Yeah. Uh, part design has different modes of selection, actually quite too many uh, selection modes uh, to my likeness. So I added this, you can uh, select the edges, which, uh, okay, uh, I didn't show in the video. This is before I added the preview mode. Because of topological naming, you can actually select the edge of the fillet feature and it will deduce which edge it is for the from the base and create the the fillet. It's more. It's almost like a direct modeling technique you you see on those um, commercial CAD, where you can directly modify a a shape, and it will show you the result. Like pulling a face and just change the fillet of a. Yes, of a, th this is actually not trivial to um, to execute because essentially you are working. Uh, the feature needs to work on top of uh, itself, so it has to deduce what uh, edge uh, it um, corresponds to the previous features. Yes. Yes. 
it's actually quite complicated as implementation. Uh, next, I've added a few new tools to the part design. The first is the split uh, feature. It is uh, borrowed from the part workbench, uh, the slice feature from the part workbench. It allows you to uh, slice uh, geometry using a datrum or other non-solid surface. Uh, it also works uh, a bit like the compound explosion in the part, which I will be showing you uh, in a later video. Next is the extrude. Basically the same as the pad feature, except that it, it's uh, mostly used to create non-solid features like uh, extrude the edge into a surface. And uh, you created uh, the edge, uh, the extrude tool to permit uh, this function inside the part design workbench, thus uh, eliminating the need to jump uh, between uh, the part, uh, to jump between different workbenches to execute the same uh, um, operation. Yes, it's actually a quite common complaint about the part design because it's uh, like support of non-solid. <clears throat> you have to rely on different workbenches to, to do this. So I've been thinking of this uh, quite often to how to introduce the non-solid features into the part design. This is one way, the extrude is one way, the other is the, the shape binder. Yeah. Well, I didn't include in the slides, the shape binder is also able to uh, bind different edges and create a new surface. Okay, the next the tool is called the generic pattern. It's meant to showcase the, the power of the new extended expression. Uh, yeah, with the Python-like syntax, you can basically create any customized pattern uh, using the expression. A wrap feature which is another effort of bringing different uh, workbenches <clears throat> to work uh, uh, to work together uh, inside the part design. It allows you to wrap uh, basically any feature from uh, other workbenches and use inside the body. Now here I'll be showing you the, the capability of the part design to fork out a new solid. Uh, I'll first showing you here is using a detrim plane to slice the this hexagon into half and then use uh, boolean features to fork out the hidden half into a new solid doing uh, further modeling like creating a fillet uh, you can hide and show the solid from different uh, show, hide and show the features from different solid independently uh, once you have done the modeling you can use the boolean to merge back the solid. Uh, next is the, the grouping capability of the uh, part design feature. The, basically, is that uh, if you have a long history of the, your model have a long history, you can uh, collapse any later feature. It collapse the history steps into a later feature. You can easily expand it or uncollapse the, the features. Uh, um, uh, you also added the possibility to, for the user to um, add the custom folders inside the tree view for ordering uh, for a more uh, clean uh, tree view. Yes, uh, yeah, that would be the and auto grouping features. Uh, you can the, the auto grouping will uh, put all those non-solid feature like uh, that from or sketch into their own uh, folders. Uh, for easier access and also for a shorter tree because uh, sometimes uh, with a complex model the tree tr the tree view becomes really long and a lot of uh, scrolling uh, is needed uh, to get where uh, you need to and uh, here we are at uh, 2021 and welcome to the future uh, the most ta uh, important task of 2021 uh, at least to me is to merge some of my features into the free cat 0.20 version and the first uh, of course will be to <clears throat> merge the topological naming and then the GUI features like uh, overlay and pie menu which is uh, is expected to be easier because it's self-contained and uh, then followed by the part design improvements which come naturally after the topological naming uh, framework is in place then uh, it will be the 3D rendering and selection. It's also a popular demand, especially the 3D selection. And the next is uh, expression. Expression might, uh, I expect it to, to uh, 
uh, need a further discussion because of uh, potential security concern, like uh, you have to have some uh, access control on how the, the, the code is run when you open the document. Yeah, the finally about the shadow, because most of my uh, code of the shadow is inside the coin 3D library. Uh, it's not inside the free cache. So the merge of this functionality will be, uh, will be talked elsewhere. Uh, yeah, and also regarding the rendering, I have uh, other big plans. Uh, I have already done some preliminary work uh, to prepare for a major upgrade of the uh, FreeCAD 3D renderer. I'll be still using the uh, Coin 3D library for graphical scene building and ensure the backward complete, uh, compatibility of the existing code. Uh, but I will be replacing the rendering part, uh, the graphical rendering part of the uh, 3D, the, the Coin 3D library using some other lower level but modern graphic libraries yeah uh, yeah basically it's it's not about whether we should use an external library or not because uh freak has uh, Built mostly on external synergy libraries. yes synergy of uh, various external libraries the problem is that the the choice of the library uh, coin 3d has unfortunately stopped developing at the at the dawn of modern graphics uh, area so it's when the modern graphics is progressing uh, heavily the coin 3d libraries stop developing uh, yeah. actually it's uh, right where they uh, half finish the shadow feature then uh, for some reason the developing stop so we have to in the future uh, sooner or later choose another uh, rendering library so i thought that uh, i i studied the code of the coin 3d and found out that it's a uh, scene the graphical scene uh related code is, is works quite well it's still relevant today but i can actually um only upgrade its uh rendering part uh, so that's my choice i in, instead of using a completely new library which involves uh, extensive change of existing code. Yeah, those are uh, the uh, plan uh, upgrade will enable uh, more advanced rendering using the modern graphics card, like uh, instance rendering, which is a more efficient way of rendering uh, basically the same geometry at different places. And also the, the hidden line view, for example, the uh, which will be benefit to workbenches, uh, workbenches like uh, tech draw. What the hidden line view means is uh, as shown in this image, the, the pipe, the, the outline of the pipe does not actually physically exist. Uh, what the tech draw is doing now is to use the open, open cascade, uh, the projection API to generate those, uh, those outlines geometrically. It, it, it is, it is slow and sometimes it will fail. What the new renderer will do is to generate those outlines in real time when it is rendering so you can freely view and still see the outline. Another example will be the section view. As you can see in the image, those uh, hatches can be generated in real time also and they will certainly benefit the tech draw. The section hatch uh, is also beneficial when working with assemblies to visually um, check for uh, collisions inside the model. Yeah. Also, uh, some other features to improve uh, large scale assembly rendering, like the level of details, so that the renderer can uh, choose a different resolution of parts to render the parts depending on their distance. Uh, and also hardware occlusion, uh, to hide the, to skip the parts that uh, are occluded or too far away. Yeah, all those features uh, talk, uh, require the, the shader based rendering. So once we have uh, established uh, the sh a framework for the shaders, some other better uh, visual enhancement will come naturally, like uh, the better shadowing, ambient occlusion we talked about, and also a more realistic looking materials and proper texture mapping, etc. The lower level modern graphics library I mentioned, uh, there are actually several choice. The first choice is a library called the Diligent Graphics, a relatively young library, but it has um, 
it follows the devel- development of modern graphics card uh, quite closely. Like the, just a few days now, they released the API for the ray tracing. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Yes, they uh, they have support uh, of different um, graphics interface on different platforms like uh, like Vulkan on Linux. And uh, on Windows will be DirectX uh, 11 or 12. And then on uh, Mac OS, uh, it's, although it's not uh, uh, directly supporting its metal uh, interface, but there will be a, a bridge interface uh, called Molten VK. Uh, yeah, the diligent will be using that for supporting Mac for OS. Supporting- uh, the other alternative is uh, BGFX, BGFX, maybe. <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced. Yeah, it's similar to diligent graphics, but uh, relatively more mature, you can say, and has uh, a larger community, uh, rich tutorials and examples. We'll see which one is more suitable for for using FreeCAD. Yeah, uh, um, how I can see it uh, from uh, your point of view, uh, BGFX uh, perhaps uh, has more documentation. It makes your life easier, but it has a little less, um, uh, how do you call it, features uh, uh, respect to diligent graphics. Yes, you can say that. And also, uh, by I search around, it seems that the, the BGFX has uh, some uh, difficulties in use in QT, the, the GUI framework that use uh, in FreeCAD. Yeah, uh, QT is actually one of the main pillars of, uh, of FreeCAD, so uh, that uh, could be actually a showstopper. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, just a difficulty. It's not like impossible or something, yeah. uh, but yeah, it still requires further investigation. Okay, uh, Real Thunder, that was a wrap. So uh, it was a really nice, uh, nice talk. Full of uh, you presented a, hand, uh, a lot of features, a lot of projects for the for the future. This uh, shines a really bright light on the future of FreeCAD, and uh, with the recent uh, arrival of um, lots of uh, users, we we can uh, make uh, this uh, community ever growing and uh, a lot uh, a lot happier uh, thanks to your incredible uh, incredible work okay. okay thank you arty i think we thank made you. it <laughs> for the, yeah, yeah. the the first time uh, is the charm okay. okay i'll have to go uh, man uh, it's one o'clock in the night okay yes yes thank you very much i'll edit the video and i'll send you the link okay thank you